But you brought up the LeBron point because his his conservation of energy is incredible. Now, D'Angelo Russell going off like he did in the first half solves that problem for him. LeBron took his first shot 13-plus game minutes into the game in Game 3. And what I've noticed with him is that, especially against Golden State because the lack of resistance at the paint rim, he is like becoming this transition guy. He was always great in transition if he wanted to be. But I think he kind of knows, like, I'm going to get most of my stuff in transition if I'm not hitting threes in this one. Yeah. That once he gets going. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's had some good, like, turns into the paint, turnaround stuff. Because I don't think he's always, I'd agree with Van Gundy. I've never thought, because remember when they were, they lost the first year with the Heat, people wanted him to go to the Akeem camp where you learn all Akeem's yeah. moves in three days, which is the most unrealistic yeah. thing in, in I'm sports. Still, I'm still going to go at some point. Apparently, you could just go for three days. You come back, you're keen. So, I don't know that you ever look jump hook. Yeah, but you're to LeBron like getting those catches and then scoring a little bit there. I don't, I don't know if he knows his body. Well, of course he does. He knows his body better than anybody. But at 38, if this is all predetermined, if it's specific matchup, if he's thinking, hey, we already know we have these guys, and he's mapping this out for 16 wins, like he actually is that smart. People that have played with I him, actually think coached he is. him. I, I yeah. really do. I think I think he thinks about this shit. I remember, I think I've told this story before, but there was a story about Brady who had been in so many Super Bowls that he figured out the science of exactly when to peak during the Super Bowl game because he said the common mistake was that there was so much, the pregame was so long and then the halftime was so long that he always felt like he peaked in the first half. So he kind of trained himself to, to kind of crest after the halftime just from experience and just because he's a fucking psycho. And I do think with LeBron, like he must think about this shit where it's like, all right, we're going to second quarter, we'll have that lineup with the guards. That's when I'll push the ball and try to change the pace. And I don't know. I think the guy, I've said this for 10 years. I think that, I think the guy really is like a basketball genius. I think Magic was, and I think Bird was, I think Jokic might be too. I don't know if he's sense of the moment, kind of big picture levitating above games like those guys, but um, I think there's like a real genius with how those guys approach basketball and watching like if LeBron can make the finals again and keep his body, you know, if he can just even keep his body healthy and productive and efficient with how old he is and how many miles he's on, I think it'd be one of the great accomplishments. It's really fucking bonkers. Like he's over 60,000 minutes. Like he, and he's hurt, you know? And we just kind of take it for granted because he looks the same as LeBron. But I, you know, Davis is the best player on that team now, and they're going to kind of come and go depending on him. But um, but watching LeBron take over that second quarter, it's like this is really really rare to do this at this age. No, but I, I think the LeBron thing is so much fun just as a topic because if, <laughs> first of all, it's not like LeBron at this stage of his career, twenty years in, was like, oh man, he was really psyched out going into Game Three at home against Golden State. No, right. it was by design. Russell is hitting enough shots. It's like, okay, I can pace myself. I can pace myself. And then once I get out on the break, like I'm going to go 25 year old. Cause you know, like those bursts, those sprint bursts in a basketball game, it can take you like three or four possessions to recover just from that burst. And yeah. so if he knows like, that's where I want to make my money here, especially if the three isn't going down, like it was at the start of the playoffs for him then I maybe have to pace myself in a way like he is, he's like a boxer now in some of these games. And I think that's so good. And it's not, it's not, it, there's no negative to it. You know, they were even getting on his ass a little bit on the broadcast. I thought for being like, Hey, you got to be more initiated. You got to be doing this stuff. And I'm like, I think he kind of knows what he's doing. And as far as the 16 wins, maybe you're right. And I'll admit, like, sometimes we talk about basketball IQ. <laughs> it's like, no way a guy saw a double team and passed out of it. Holy shit. Yeah. Let's give this guy a doctorate. <laughs> Right. right. Like sometimes it's completely, it's the most basic stuff. And then everybody freaks out like, oh, this guy's going to just division that you're like, dude, that the double teams in front of him. He's at the three point line. It's not that big of a deal. I was talking to, with somebody recently that, that coached him and they were in awe, in awe of him. And I was like, well, get, wait, give me. And they were like, all right, well, here's one example. Substitute, uh, substitution patterns alone. Like he knew. <laughs> He was like, oh, wait, if it's they have to use their TV one before this or they lose it. So I'm going to get and it was like, look, I'm I'm mangling the story a bit. But the point yeah. was LeBron was basically telling the guys 
hey, when they call their timeout here, because it was an important game, I can get my rest here, but that means I can come back earlier here. And like he had already mapped it out. Like, look, when right. McVay went over every single play off the top of his head, like, you know, fish sticks, and I thought LeBron wanted to prove that he could do it too because McVay was getting like too much love. I was like, this all seems a little bit coordinated. But I have yet to hear somebody either play with LeBron or be associated with him on the basketball side that doesn't kind of do like an eye roll, like head tilt of that he's at another level. So maybe that's what we're seeing right now with the way he's pacing himself. You know, it's another example of that, and this will sound critical. Um, when he doesn't have the right team, we've seen him kind of fade in a couple series where he kind of knew before we did, like, oh my God, we're not going to win. And you can kind of see him almost like he gets so bummed out by the situation. I, I remember watching in person in the, the 2014 finals in game four and game five. I could see him from the stands. I could see like his fucking chest brain calculating like the Terminator and being like, oh, we're going to lose. Like he just knew. And it changed the way how he played. And I remember in the, I think it was the beginning of the second half in game five, he just wouldn't shoot. He was throwing these hard passes at everybody because he knew they were going to fucking lose. And in this situation, I think he knows this team's, he's probably, he's played against everybody. And he's probably like, if we can just stay healthy, we can probably hang with all of these teams. There's probably not one team that's going to overpower us. The Russell, like, I can't figure out the Russell thing. He's one of my least favorite players, but he does have these random games where he just, for a half, he looks awesome. LeBron's always, always like guys like that. These weird guys that if they have it, keep them in. They don't have it, take it out. Um, there's that this team has a toughness to it too that I think is bizarre since they put it halfway together in February. But I think he likes the team. I think like I genuinely think he thinks he can win the title with this team, which is why it's been so fascinating watching his little crazy chess brain go into activation. <laughs> 